Hi, it's Mrs. Linkford. Uh, I'm going to take you through concept five. This is actually my third attempt on the video, so maybe the third time is going to be a charm. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about solving equations with variables on both sides of the equal sign. <clears throat> so here are some steps that you can go through when you've got variables on both sides. First thing is look for lonely variables ones that don't look like they have a coefficient, they actually do have a coefficient of a 1, and just write that in to remind yourself. Then look at each side of the equal sign separately and simplify. So distribute if you need to, combine like terms if you need to. Then you're going to actually start uh, the serious solving where you're going to move the variables or collect them on one side of the equal side. Then you're going to move or collect your numbers so variables first, numbers on the other side of the equal sign, and then finally undo the math to solve the equation. Let's look at your first example. So 7 minus 8x equals 4x minus 17. I don't see any lonely variables where you need to place a 1 in front. I don't, I'm looking on the separate sides of the equal sign, and I don't see any distribution that needs to be done or combine, combining like terms. So now we're just going to move on to collecting the variables on one side. My, this note right here says always move variables to one side first and move the smaller variable. Negative 8x, that's smaller than 4x, so let's move that. We undo the math, so we're going to add 8x to both sides of the equal sign. So we'll have 7 equals 12x minus 17. Then we're going to move our numbers, just our constants. And I'm going to the opposite side. I'm going to undo that math. So 24 equals 12x. My whole goal is I'm trying to get x by itself. So I have some math I need to undo here. 12 is being multiplied, so I can undo it by dividing. So I get 2 equals x, which is the same thing as x equals 2. Now the awesome thing about equations is that when you solve them, you can always check and see if you're right. So plug in your possible solution into the original equation wherever you see x. You're going to work the left and the right side separately and see then if they match, if they equal each other. So this will be 7 minus 16, which is negative 9. The right side, so we're going to multiply first, 8 minus 17, which is also negative 9. So that solution checks. We did it. Now let's look at that second practice problem that we've got. <clears throat> I do see a lonely variable. Do you see it? That negative x. So there is an understood coefficient of 1. We can put that in. And then on the left and right side, I see some um, distributing that we could do. So 10 times 2x is 20x. 10 times positive 2 is positive or plus 20. And then I have minus 1x equals. Then I'll distribute 16. 2 times 8x is 16x. 2 times negative x is negative 16. Now I'm going to look at left and right side of the equal sign separately. I have 20x minus 1x, so that will give me 19x's. On the left side, on the right side, I have x's and then just my constant of negative 16, so I can't combine those. Now I can start collecting or moving my variables to one side. 16x is smaller than 19, so I'm going to move that to the left. I'm going to undo it. It's a positive 16. So I'm doing the opposite. I'm going to subtract. So I get 3x plus 20 equals. Now this will zero out and I'll bring down negative 16. So that sign in front goes with the number. Now I'm going to move my number to the opposite side of the equal sign from the variables. So I'll have 3x equals Negative 16 minus 24, that's going to give me negative 36. Last thing is I need to undo this multiplication. So x will equal negative 12. 
we think. Now let's check it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go back to the original and I'm going to switch and see if I've got a little more space. I do not. Now I do. Okay, so remember we are checking our possible solution x equals negative 12. So I will write that here with the negative in front of it. And let's try again. All right, so 10, 2 times negative 12 plus 2 minus a negative 12 equals 2, 8 times negative 12 minus 8. All right, not the neatest. Sorry about that. So let's work inside our parentheses. I've got a negative 24 plus 2 minus a negative 12. So when I subtract a negative, that's like adding a positive. 8 times negative 12 will give me negative 96. And I'm going to subtract 8 more. Now I'm checking, so remember I'm looking to see. Now I'm going to work the left side all the way down and then the right side and see if they match. So this will give me a negative 22 plus 12. I'm going to multiply first, so negative 220 plus 12. So that will give me a negative 208. So I have 2 times negative 96 minus 8 more will give me a negative 104. And when I multiply 2 times negative 104, I do get negative 208. So the left side matches the right side, so that means our, our solution of x equals negative 12 is correct. All right, here's some special cases. So let's just work through them and see what we get. <clears throat> All right, see any lonely variables on number 3? I do, so let's place a 1. Now let's distribute. So we'll have 2x minus 4 equals 5x. I have a negative 1 there. I can place that. So if I negative 1 times 3x will give me a negative 3x. Negative 1 times negative 6 is a positive 6. Now on the left side, I don't have anything to distribute or like terms to combine, but on the right side, I have 2x plus 6. Now, if you're heads up and you start looking, you may realize you've got a problem. Because this is saying 2 times some number minus 4 equals or is the same as 2 times some number if you add 6. Well, if you just think about it, that, that can't be true. But let's follow the math all the way through and see what we get. So let's move our variables, collect them. I'm going to subtract my 2x. And now this becomes 0. So I get just simply negative 4 equals 6. Now that's a statement, but if you look, that is not true. Negative 4 does not equal positive 6. So when you get a math statement, an equation that is not true, that indicates that there is no solution. There's no number that you can put in for x up here that's going to make the left side match the right side. And that happens. So what you're looking for, your algebraic clue is when you solve and get all the way to the end, you have one number equaling a different number. And it's just not a true statement. So that means that there's no solution, there's no value that you can put in that will make that equation true. Now let's look at this second uh, special case. So we've got a lonely variable here. Now let's distribute 2x plus 6 equals 5x. Let's place that negative 1. So negative 3x negative times a negative is a positive. So on the right side, I can combine those. Now, do you see? Do you see how the left side 
is just the same thing as the right side. 2 times some number plus 6 equals 2 times some number plus 6. Yes, that's true, but let's solve this all the way. So let's subtract 2x from both sides. And I'm going to continue just over here. So I get x, or sorry, 6 equals 6. Now this, a number equaling itself, yes, that is true. So that means that you've got any number that you were place in for x would work. So our solution is all real numbers. And that'll be your cue right there when you have a number, a number equaling itself. All right, now some independent practice. Okay, so on this first one, when you solve it, you should get x equals 3. But you go ahead and solve it all the way through. On the next one, solve it and then check your answer. All right, you can do it. Now, finally, this application problem, I'm going to help you with the setup, and then um, you can solve. So we've got Crazy Carnival charging $10 entry fee and then $1.30 per ride, whereas Wonderland Carnival charges no entry fee but $2.30 per ride. How many rides uh, must you ride for the two carnivals to cost the same? When things are the same, they cost the same, that means their values are equal. So right away you can use that to help you solve an equation. Now we want the rides. So Crazy Carnival, it said it's $10 and then $1.30 per ride. But we don't know how many rides. That is our unknown. So that's what we're going to let our variable be. I'm just going to use x. So x will be our number of rides. So $10 plus $1.30, I'm, I'm going to drop the zero, per ride, or I'm going to multiply. Now Wonderland Carnival, no entry fee, so I don't have any number like 10, but it's $2.30. I'm going to drop the zero per, or multiplied, by each ride. Now I've got it set up so that an expression for what it will cost at Crazy Carnival equals an expression for what it will cost at the Wonderland Carnival. They equal each other. Now if you solve that equation, you'll find out how many rides you can ride for that carnival um, to cost the same. Alright, good luck.